I recently picked up my first walking foot machine. I purchased this Thompson PW201 off of eBay for about a hundred bucks. When the machine arrived, it wasn't working. It took me quite a while to find and figure out all the various problems on this. And since this was my first walking foot machine, I had to learn a lot about walking feet. I decided to make this video because I couldn't find any videos on YouTube or the internet that showed the mechanisms that actually control the walking feet. Um, I'm also making this video in case I, in the future, I forget what I did or how it works. Um, so hopefully this video will help you out if you're trying to repair or fix a Thompson or a walking foot machine. Let's go ahead and get started. In general, this is basically a regular sewing machine with two new components. Those components are the outer presser foot and the inside presser foot. Other than that, this is basically a class 15 sewing machine. It uses the same shuttle hook, the same bobbin, um, and I was able to take some parts off of my other machines to get this one functioning. Um, we're going to focus on the outer presser foot first. Basically, when the machine is wound, you can see that the outer pressing foot comes up, comes forward, comes down, meets with the feed dogs, and pulls the fabric back. The inside presser foot comes down as the needle comes down and this pushes the fabric down and ensures that there's a tight loop um, inside the fabric. Now when I got this machine the outer presser foot was not functioning at all and after some troubleshooting uh, I came to realize that there were essentially three different problems with this that I had to fix. You'll notice on the Thompson machines that the tension assembly is on the Base plate here, whereas on sailrite machines, uh, sailrites from at least the last 20 years, the tension assembly is here on the front. So in order to get to the actuators and the things that control the outside and the inside pressure feet, the first thing that we have to do is take off this face plate, and then we also have to take off this motor cover. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. It's relatively simple. There are two screws here, one up here, one down here flat head and then two screws here and you can use a flat head <clears throat> or a Phillips it's up to you so I'm going to go ahead and remove those now that I have those plates removed the first thing I'm going to do is diagnose the machine and just kind of figure out what's going on and what the issues are you can take um, some fabric this is some pretty thick uh, seat belt type of uh, webbing essentially that I have folded over twice and I've already sewn when I was calibrating the machine. I pulled the needle out here and I'm going to put this fabric in here and hand turn the machine and see if the fabric gets pulled through. And you can see that the fabric does get pulled through on this machine because this is calibrated now. But when I got it, fabric wasn't pulling through at all. And there were a few issues that were going on. So the first issue was that the outer presser foot, that's this one, was too low. And as it was getting pulled back, it was hitting the feed dog and it was not able to move. The outer presser foot should not be hitting the feed dog at all because there's going to be fabric there and it doesn't need to be that low. So the first thing you might want to do is just lift the feed dog up a bit and you can do that pretty simply by adjusting these two screws that are back here. That's actually a flat hat. So what I did was I loosened those screws up and I lifted the feed dog up just about a quarter of an inch so that there was space between the feed dog, sorry, the outer presser foot and the feed dog. Now you can't see it right now, but there's probably, I don't know, an eighth of an inch of distance between the feed dog and the outer presser foot. So when I turn the wheel, they don't actually hit each other. So this was one of the issues that I was having, was that basically the outer presser foot was too low. Now I had more issues, and those have to do with the mechanisms on the back. 
But while we're here, let's take a look at a few things. This odd shaped triangle phallic looking mechanism is called the presser foot actuator. And this controls both the outer and the inner presser foot. As you turn the wheel, you'll see it move. And it does two things. One, it lifts the inner presser foot and the outer presser foot but it also moves the outer presser foot so that it goes forward and comes back. So depending on what your presser foot is doing, if it's only going up and down or not going up and down at all, take a look at this actuator and make sure that it's moving when you turn the wheel. Now when I got this, mine wasn't moving correctly. And the outer presser foot was not pulling fabric back and not going through a circular motion. So the reason I took the motor plate off on the back was because this is where some interesting stuff is. And if you watch a demo of these machines, the motor case has to be on for the machine to work, so you never actually get to see these in any of the videos. And I was really trying to find a video that had these in them so that I could see how they should be set up and what they should look like. I didn't find that video. Um, I downloaded a bunch of the PDF guidebooks, the Sailrite guidebooks, but none of them really indicated how these should be set up. So I'm going to walk you through a few different things here. So the reason we took the motor case off was so that we could get to these two mechanisms back here. These are what control the inner and the outer presser foot and the feed mechanism that basically pulls the fabric back. Not the feed dog, but the outer presser foot mechanism that actually gives the feed dog motion like a circular motion. So there's some interesting stuff going on back here. This one on the left is called the feed rod and this one controls the outer presser foot mechanism. This one on the right is called the lift rod and this controls the inner presser foot that goes up and down that the needle goes through. Now when I first got this machine, both of these were really loose and this created some issues. So the first thing you want to know is that these should be tight. There shouldn't be any play in them, okay? And they're controlled or held in place by two regular nuts and then a really long nut. And what you should do is loosen up the two outside nuts and then tighten the long nut in the middle so that it pulls the rods together and makes it tight. Once you have it tight, then you can tighten the nut on top and the nut on bottom so that it doesn't move. Make sure you do that really tightly because after I used the machine for about 30 minutes when I first fixed it, this slowly came loose and I lost motion in the outer presser foot. Okay? So that was one of the issues that I had. So you can't see it, but there's a lot of paint missing back here behind this mechanism and that's because this was too loose and as the machine was moving, it was rubbing up against the paint. Okay? So the first thing I did was I loosened the nuts and then I figured out which direction brought the rods together. And I think it's to the right, righty tighty, which would make sense. And you don't want to over tighten it, you just want to make sure that there's no play in either of them as the mechanisms go up and down. Next, this was loose and these are just some additional bolts that basically hold on to the feed tube and the lift rod. And this is an interesting mechanism. So the feed tube is the outer tube that you can see here. And then the lift rod actually controls what's called a lift crank that runs inside of the tube. And the lift crank is the one that controls the mechanism so that things go up and down. And the feed tube is the one that controls the motion of the outer presser foot. So make sure that these are tight. Another issue I had, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. Was when I oiled the machine, I oiled this bracket right here. And this bracket essentially grips on to the tube. 
and that's what causes it to turn. There's a very small screw that you can get out up here on top. Well, when I oiled the machine, I put too much oil in the spot and the clamp was no longer gripping the tube correctly, which was causing an issue with the inner presser foot going up and down. And the way I diagnosed that was essentially, I turned the, manually turned the machine and as this bracket went up and down, I noticed nothing was happening on the inside presser foot. So I put this at its lowest position essentially, which was right, here, okay, which also represents the highest position of the needle in the inside presser foot. And then I cleaned off the oil and I tightened it down a lot, very heavily, right here to make sure that it was catching. Okay, so those were some issues that I was having with the rods in the back, and I couldn't find any videos that basically showed what was going on. So just to quickly recap while we're here, the outer one controls the motion of the outer presser foot so that it goes forward and back in a circular motion. And then the inner one controls the lift from the inner presser foot as it goes up and down and also the lift of the outer presser foot so that it comes up and goes in a circular motion. All right, you need both of these to work in unison for the machine to actually function correctly. So make sure these are tight and that they didn't come loose. Make sure that the bracket that's holding the lift rod is on there securely and tightly. Make sure that the nuts that hold the rods in place are tight. And then make sure that the rods haven't shifted their position. They should go inwards. I'll try and get you, but you can see from here, they should go in towards the machine and they shouldn't go out towards the machine. There shouldn't be any play here. So if there's play here after you've tightened all this up, just look at the bottom and make sure that those nuts are securely tightened there. Great. Once that was done, then my feed dogs started to behave like, sorry, my presser feet started to behave correctly. I'll try and get a good shot here. Okay, so now, see how the outer presser foot goes forward, goes down, it aligns with the feed dog and it comes back. And then as the needle comes down, and there's no needle in here right now, the inner presser foot, this one, goes down to hold the fabric in place. And then as it comes up, the outer presser foot once again comes down. Now, we have a problem here. You'll notice the outer presser foot is not coming up anymore. And that's because I adjusted the height and I need to raise it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise it up a little bit right now. And that's done through these two screws right here. I like to just lift it up high enough initially and then I'll calibrate it later. I just want to make sure that it's having the correct motion. Once that's done then I can adjust the height pretty easily. Okay, so now you can see that the outer presser foot is pretty high. I'm going to try and zoom in here again. Great, and now it comes down, it comes back, and it goes forward. Right, so there should be a, I don't know, an oblong oval motion to it, kind of like when you walk, essentially. It shouldn't hit the feed dog because there'll be fabric in there and you don't want them to get stuck because they both have teeth on them. And then the inner presser foot should go down with the needle and up with the needle. Okay, so this is what you want to be happening. All right, so we've spent a good amount of time on the outer presser foot, so let's just quickly talk about the inner presser foot. This one's simple. Uh, essentially, if it's not going up and down, then look at one of the rods on the back that I just showed you. If it is going up and down, you might just have to adjust the height that it's at. 
and depending on the thickness of fabric that you're putting in here like I'm putting backpack straps in here so both of those are actually fairly high you might need to adjust it and that height is adjusted by one screw that screw is right there and you can essentially loosen it up and then move this up and down now when I have this calibrated for backpack straps I run into an interesting problem and that problem is that both of them are so high that the lifting mechanism up on top doesn't always open up all the way because the presser feet or the the presser feeder is essentially hitting a bracket that's right down here. And that's okay because um, it functions properly when I have them lower, but when I'm doing something really, really thick, it won't stay up and I kind of just have to hold it up in place, put the fabric in there, and then put it down. A minor, minor nuisance. All right, so I had all those problems on this machine when I first got it and essentially figured out how to get the outer and inner presser feet to work correctly. I did not have to adjust the needle bar height, thankfully. Um, and I did have to oil everything up in here pretty good and make sure everything was screwed in tightly. All right, so now we're gonna move on to some other issues I had with this machine. We're gonna spend a few minutes talking about how to calibrate the presser feet. So what you'll need for this is some fabric, preferably the fabric that you plan on sewing on the machine with. Remember this is a fairly heavy duty machine and you don't want to use just thin nylons or anything like that. You can use a regular sewing machine for that. Um, I'm using some webbing here but without a needle, without the motor connected, without power, you're going to lift up the presser feet put them down and hand wind the machine and make sure of a few things. Well, ideally what you want is for your fabric to get pulled through. And you don't want the fabric to be loose. So I'm gonna zoom in here and try to capture this for you. But when the outer presser foot is up and the inner presser foot is down, which is when the needle is at its lowest position, there should be enough pressure there to keep the fabric from pulling. It shouldn't slide loosely underneath. Okay? Now, manually turn your machine so that the needle and the inner presser foot come up and then the outer presser foot comes down and pulls it back. Now, there's a few observations here that you should be aware of. The inner presser foot is smooth on top and on bottom. Okay, the, it doesn't have to come up off the fabric that much, if at all, for the outer presser foot and the bottom feed dog to pull it through. So as you look at this, don't expect this to come up too high and don't set it so that it comes up too high because it doesn't need to. There's enough power when the outer and the outer presser foot and the feed dog come together to pull the fabric through. If this comes up too high, then your thread is going to have a new, uh, loose loop on it. And so one of the mistakes I made early on was thinking that this inner presser foot really needed to come up high when it actually doesn't. Um, so I'm gonna turn this and you'll see that the test webbing I have does get pulled through correctly. Okay, now when the needle is at its highest point, and the outer presser foot just starts to pull fabric back, the fabric should still be tight. If the fabric is loose at that point, then you need to lower the outer presser foot. Right? So this is a calibrated machine. Also, you have to make sure that the, the presser feet lever is down. If the lever is up and you try to sew your needle is going to hit it and you're not going to be able to complete a rotation so just make sure that your presser feet lever is down and another thing to keep an eye out for is as the outer presser foot comes up there should be that should come off the fabric because that needs to come up and over push down and pull back come up and over 
and pull back. The inner presser foot doesn't have to come off the fabric, but it does have to release enough pressure to allow the fabric to be pulled through. Okay, so you can just do this by hand without a needle. Okay, now if your fabric's getting pulled through, and by the way, I have this uh, thread stitch set to the highest, which is five millimeters. You don't want it set to one or two because then it's barely going to pull the fabric. So make sure that you have your thread stitch set to the highest number. All right, and this is how you know that your, your presser feet are calibrated correctly. At no point should the fabric be loose enough that it can come out. I'm pulling on it here. You could pull on it from the back as well. Um, but there should be constant pressure on it so that it doesn't move as stitches are being made. But not too much pressure that it can't be pulled back. Okay, and I already showed you the screws that you need to adjust to adjust the height. If you're going from something like this webbing to a backpack strap, this is just a test strap, that has foam inside, mesh on the outside, fabric on top, and gross grain on the side, you're probably going to want to do the same exercise with this material so that the presser feet are calibrated at the correct height. Now we're going to move into timing issues and thread issues having to do with the bombin in the shuttle case. Um, I had three or four specific different issues on this machine that I had to fix before it started to function. From what I can put together, the machine was kind of mistreated and there were some serious issues with the needle plate and the shuttle hook and the shuttle cradle and the lower drive shaft. So I'm going to show you what I looked at to get these fixed. I've taken the presser feet off for now just so that you can actually see what I'm talking about here and I'm also going to take the needle plate off. But one of the things that I wanted to show you was that the hole in the needle plate right here was just destroyed and I had to take a small file um, destroyed because the needle was hitting it and I'd hit it a few times and this was cutting thread. So you can take the needle plate off which I'm going to do here in a minute by just removing these two screws. Either a very short screwdriver works well or a really long screwdriver or I have some bits I have some long bits that I picked up that I use that I can use just to remove the screws. But these screws don't have to go on too tight and it's not too difficult to take these off. And in case you're wondering, that sound is rain. It's raining pretty hard. It's nice. Good time to be in the garage. So let's see if I can get this on video. I don't know if you can see this, but I had to take a small little circular file and basically file out the inside of this hole here because it was just really sharp and it was cutting and catching thread. So that was one issue. The feed dog itself was fine. I took it off just to clean it out. There's two screws back here. It only goes on one way. It's pretty easy to put back. Thankfully, I didn't have any issues with that. Now, if we take this out, I had a few issues down here. So on this cover, which I think is called the, it's called the Hook Race Body Cove. If the needle hits this at all, which it can happen if there's problems with the machine, you'll get little burrs in here. And these burrs will also catch your thread and cut your thread. And I had a burr on the back side here, so I had to take that same file and basically file this out so it was nice and smooth. Do that from both sides, clean it out, make sure there's no burrs on that part there.
Now on the shuttle hook that came with the machine, I pulled it out and I could see, can't see them anymore because I cleaned them up, but there was basically burrs on this lip right here. Wish there was a better way to show you. And then burrs on this upper lip right here on this pointy part. And I used some emery cloth and I basically sanded this down and did what I could to this, but I continued to have problems with this shuttle hook. Now this assembly down here is just the same as a class 15 sewing machine and I, I do have another machine that's like that. So I took that shuttle hook from that machine and I put that in this machine. But I'm going to show you what the issue was that I was having so that you know what to look out for. But before I get to that I want to show you something else that happened. This is the shuttle cradle. This right here and it's connected to the lower drive shaft and it goes back and forth. Now when I first got the machine the timing was off and this had shifted probably from whatever problems the machine was having. And when this shifts that'll put your machine out of timing. But the issue that I had was that as it went up it was hitting the feed dog mechanism down here which is really hard to see and catching it. So the wheel would rotate fairly simply and smoothly for, I don't know, 90% of the turn. But then it would just hit something, the feed dog, the part that's up here, and it would just get stuck. So if you're having problems with rotating the hand wheel and you notice that there's a certain section where basically it's really tough and it's catching, the timing is probably off on this mechanism. So I'm going to show you how to adjust this. Now if you were trying to sew, you would have caught this issue because the needle would have just hit the shuttle hook and you would have noticed that the timing was off. But I took that part out and I was just making sure that everything was oiled and smoothed and I noticed along the way that there was a rough spot about 10% of the time on the rotation. Um, adjusting the timing is not that difficult. It can be a little scary at first, but it's really not that difficult. And um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Go ahead and lay the machine on its back. The motor case and the motor are still off and the faceplate is still off, so it lays relatively fat, flat. And I'm going to turn the wheel, always turn it towards you, and you can see that right here is a very small set screw. And if you continue to turn it, right at the top, right here, is another set screw. Okay? Now, word of warning, when I first oiled the machine, I put a significant amount of oil on this part here. And after I fixed the timing, the oil contributed to this cradle continuing to move. So I had to pull this off and use a degreaser and clean the inside of this and the end of the shaft here so that there was a good friction and that it wouldn't shift unnecessarily. But essentially what you do is you loosen those screws. Don't take them out all the way. Just loosen them. You need a, a small screwdriver. I use this long bit that I have. Picked up a set. And I'll just loosen it two or three turns. Then rotate the hand wheel until you can see the other one at the top right here and loosen that two to three. You don't want them to come out because they're a pain in the ass to get back in. And then what you're going to do is put in the shuttle hook. This guy. Okay. And with your finger you can hold it in there. You should be able to if you're not on camera and rotate it to see how it moves. Okay, now for this exercise you definitely need a needle in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a needle in there. Okay. 
I'm using a size 20 needle. The recess should go in towards the machine. Let's see if I can do this with the machine on its side. Make sure the needle's up all the way. Tighten it down. Okay, great. So I'm gonna put the machine up like this real fast, just so you can see what's going on. Okay, so you put the shuttle hook in there without the cover. Use your finger to hold the center and then push the wheel towards the front. And you'll see the needle come down. Now, the needle shouldn't hit anything, but if the timing is off, the needle will hit the shuttle hook. And the way you figure out which direction to turn it is by knowing how it should work. And that's done best by looking at another one of your machines, but I'm gonna to try to show you on video here. So hold this in as you turn it with your hand, and the needle should come down. Let me see if I can get a better shot of this. Good, nice. Okay. the needle should come down right into that slit on the hook. Okay? And it shouldn't hit anything. So if your timing's off and the needle's coming down, say, right here and hitting it, you know that you need to retard it a little bit or turn it to the left and bring it back. Now, if the needle is hitting the cradle, then you probably need to move it forward. Just choose the direction that means you have to move it the least. Try not to do a full circle if you don't have to. So I'm going to show you again. You want the needle to come down and as it comes back up right above the thread you want this little hook right there. It's hard to see. That's going to catch the loop in the thread. That should be right above the eye of the needle as the needle's going up. Okay, but the first thing you want to check is just if anything's getting, the needle's hitting anything. So just rotate it, make sure that that's free. Okay, once you figure it out whether you need to move it left or right and by how much, it's kind of a guessing game. So at that point, bring the needle up to its highest point Pull out the bottom case. Put the machine back on its side. Loosen those two screws. Even after you loosen the screws, this isn't going to move easily. At least it shouldn't. Once the screws are loosened, you have to figure out how you're gonna move it. And so to do that, I use two pliers. <coughs> And you can use whatever you have on hand, but I use a pair of pliers like this, and I use a pair of vice grips. And what I do is I grab the shaft down here with these pliers, and I grab the center part of this cradle here, and then I just twist it left or right in very small increments going off however much I remembered I needed when I was just showing you the timing on the needle. You can also grip it from here and turn it, but you want to make sure that you hold the shaft right here. Don't bend it. Yeah, not that it matters in the middle, but don't bend it. And uh, hold on to it tightly, and then you can just move this up or move this down. Then without tightening the screws, set it back up. the shuttle hook back in, hold it in place, turn, rotate the machine, and take a look at where the needle comes down, but specifically where it comes up. Okay? Let me show you here. This hook right here 
this one right right here should be right behind the needle and right above the hole of the needle to catch the thread okay and by right above I mean like not immediately above but almost immediately above okay and then go ahead and just hand turn the machine a few times now what you can do is put this back in there put this case back on clip it into place make sure it's in there right okay and then with the needle in the machine turn and just go through a few rotations and make sure that the needle's not getting deflected left or right okay and make sure that it looks like from what you can see it's coming down and going up in the right spot now I'm going to show you how to verify this but if this is happening and it's not hitting anything and it looks good go ahead put the machine back on its side and tighten up those screws really good but don't thread them because they're difficult screws to find and get so just make sure that they're really really tight at this point since we want to thread the machine so we can verify the timing you're going to want to put the faceplate back on you need the faceplate in order to get the tension adjustment and to get the thread ran to the needle correctly all right so threading the machine is, is pretty simple this machine did not come with the I don't know these poles where you put the thread through normally so I had to uh, essentially make one and uh, it's worked just fine but I'm gonna go ahead and put it through both holes up here so there's one I'm using nylon 69 bonded thread off a thread stand there's a little hole right here you want to go ahead and stick the thread through great now on the front of the machine we're going to put the thread through this little holder up here sorry this one right there great and then the thread comes down and around the tension disc up behind and over the bar and then into the check spring from there it goes into the lift and from there it comes down through this little hole bracket thing around the little spring clip on the bottom and then make sure that you have the recess to the right that's on your needle let me adjust that. Great. Make sure your needle's in there tight. And then th through the hole. Nice and simple. Tension's a little tight, but that's okay. Okay. So now we're going to talk about timing. So let me show you what should happen. Thread up your bobbin. Threads up like any other bobbin. It's really relatively simple. Clip it in there. All right, let's lower the camera. All right, so we're gonna make sure that the machine loops and threads and the timing is correct. This is the bobbin thread. I have like 10 inches now. And then I've got the machine threaded up the presser feet are still off just so I can see what's going on the needle plate is also off it doesn't need to be on right now and what I'm going to do is hold the thread from the needle turn and rotate the machine and what we should see is the needle on the thread get hooked by the by the shuttle hook you'll see it get pulled under right there you can see the thread right there let's see if I can zoom in for you okay and a 
if I keep turning, it should come off smoothly and hook the bobbin thread. Just like that. That's what you want to happen. Now when I got the machine, that wasn't happening. And it took me a while to figure out what was going on. So one more time. Check that your timing and that your shuttle hook's in the right place. Go ahead and do a rotation slowly. Make sure that the shuttle hook catches the thread. And then make sure that the thread comes off the shuttle hook easily from the rotation, just like that. Okay? Now, what was actually happening was that the shuttle hook was damaged and I believe warped. So give me a second. I'm going to put the pad one in there and show you what was happening. All right, so up to this point, um, I noticed that the machine definitely has had some trauma. I had to sand down this hole in the needle plate right here. The shuttle cover had some burrs on it, and the shuttle hook itself that came with this machine had some burrs on it. And I filed all of them down really, really good. In fact, there are no more burrs on the shuttle hook that's in there. But an issue that I got stuck with that I thought was a timing issue, but wasn't, was malfunctioning of the shuttle hook. So let me show you what happens when that's not working correctly. So I've got the machine threaded, I have a bobbin threaded, and I'm going to try and pull the loop through. I'm keeping pressure on the upper string like you normally would. And I'm going to go ahead and manually rotate the machine. And you'll see that the thread gets hooked correctly, which is great. Okay, here it comes. There it is. But it doesn't get released. It doesn't come up. It catches. I actually have to fiddle with it to get it to catch. And initially I thought this was a timing issue and I spent a lot of time trying to adjust it forward and adjust it back and find a sweet spot. But then I realized I had another class 15 shuttle hook and I just took that out of the machine and put that in there and it worked right away. So it wasn't a timing issue, it was just an issue with a bad shuttle hook. So if your thread gets pulled, you know your timing is good. But if your thread doesn't return easily, uh, automatically, right away, then you're going to have issues and chances are it's the actual shuttle hook itself. See how that thread is still there? So let me go ahead and put the good one back in so you can see what should happen. So I only say this so that you don't think you're having a timing issue because it might just be the shuttle hook itself. And there aren't any obvious burrs on this shuttle hook. I've smoothed it and sanded it with emery cloth. I can't figure out what the exact issue is, but I did have another one in an older machine. And I plopped this one in here. Oops. Load up our bobbin. And we'll do this again. So watch how this should work. Comes down, thread gets hooked, and it gets released. Like a spring, almost automatically. Right? I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to play with it to get it to come off. It just came off. That's what you want to happen. If there's any friction, if it's not coming up right away, sand down the shuttle hook. If you still don't see any burrs, well, chances are you just need a new one. It should just get released like that. You know timing is good because the thread itself is getting hooked as the needle comes up. If your timing was off, the thread wouldn't get hooked in this upper part up here. But since the timing is good, the thread gets hooked, comes down, it's pulled and comes right up. And it's actually the take-up spring that pulls it up like that and gives it its jump. So another issue I had with this machine was that I had a bad shuttle hook. Standard class 15 shuttle hook, so if you have any other machines, class 15, feel free to try it out. So now we've adjusted the timing. I fixed the issue with the shuttle hook. And the machine was basically fully functional. Now, if the lift rod and the feed rod are not set up correctly, you'll have another very interesting issue, and it's one that I struggled with for a long time. 
the symptom of this issue is that the feed bar, the lift bar right here, and the triangular feed actuator ran into each other. Their timing was off. So as this bar came down, it was getting hit by this and they were smashing each other every time. The reason that was occurring was because of the bracket back here that holds the lift rod had slipped and the timing was off. And when I tightened it up, it was still off. So if you have to adjust this or if you notice that these two components are hitting each other because they really shouldn't hit each other, you're going to want to tighten the lift rods, the feed rod, and then make sure that this bracket is tightened as well. And you know that this bracket is in the right position when the needle bar is at its highest point and this is straight up horizontal. horizontal. Okay, so when the needle bar, the needle is at its highest point, this little bracket right here should be horizontal. Let me zoom into that for you. This one right here, it's kind of hard to see. Okay, but it's the one that's connected to the lift rod. The lift rod is the one that's on the right. This was the one that controls the inner presser foot and the lift on the outer presser foot. And then this is the outer presser foot feed rod. This is the one that controls the motion of the outer presser foot. But that was another issue that stumped me for a long time. And essentially, it almost damaged the presser foot here. And it was another place where components were hitting each other that they shouldn't have been. Some other interesting stuff to keep an eye on. The inner presser foot should be straight forward and backwards. It shouldn't be angled at all, because if it is, it will collide with the outer presser foot. If it is angled or if it's off, you just have to adjust the one screw on the inner presser foot, and then you can easily just twist and turn the whole bar so that it's straight like this. Um, a very simple adjustment. Another thing I recommend is that before you start working on your sewing machine, you magnetize all your screwdriver bits. This way these screws stay on there and don't fall into weird places. You should also have a little Tupperware or something to keep and put all the screws in because these are really difficult screws to find. Um, anyways, these are like $5 on Amazon and they just make sure that the screws themselves stay attached and on the front of the screw and don't fall off and make it easier to take things out and put them together. Before you put the face plate back on, go ahead and grab your test fabric with the needle out of the, not without a needle basically, and just make sure that the presser feet are adjusted and working correctly because if you need to adjust their height, they're right here and you'll have to take the face plate off again. Also, when putting your screws back on, make sure that you do your screws and your nuts really tightly without stripping them because uh, frequently the presser feet screws will loosen up from all the vibration and then it'll just kind of fall down and it won't lift up and it won't work correctly. When you put the motor case back, make sure to stick the motor gear part into the band here first because it can be difficult to do if you mount the motor case first. So now the motor is attached to the gear with the band in place ready to go. And we're almost done here but just so you know occasionally the belt will slip off the gear and if that happens you can loosen these two screws and adjust the tension depending on which gear is slipping off. These should be really tight, but they shouldn't be overly tight. You should be able to turn the machine by hand. And both of them should work without slipping off.
Well, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, this is the Thompson PW201 that I picked off of eBay. It had tons and tons of problems and was the impetus for creating this video. Feel free to leave me comments. Thank you for your time.